Cinematic darling Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey has a sequel out. That's right, not even a year later, they already churned out a sequel. This one's called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Not I feel like there was a missed opportunity to get a little bit more creative with the title, but maybe they got more creative with the film. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about it. Let's begin. With a new cast, new characters, a new story, and 10 times the budget, because the first one had a budget of $100,000, this film, Blood and Honey 2, will surely be one for the ages, right folks? Before I dip my stick into Pooh's honey hole, I heard how that sounded, please do me a favor and slap that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. I post movie reviews every single week, gotta have you on board. I would love if you came along for the ride. Uh, we have fun here. I feel like I'm talking with a buddy after watching a film together, at least that's the goal of these video reviews. Now, if you liked Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 1, uh, wow. May I ask why? Also, we have very different tastes. And that's okay. That's fine. And so I'm gonna take this review from a few different angles. Number one, uh, to just get it out of the way, I did not like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. I know, I'm probably a shocker to some of you that know me and my channel and my thoughts on films. I thought that it was better than the first one, which is really saying nothing because you could film a cat eating its own shit for an hour and a half and I might find that more compelling at the end of the day than what we got. Here's the deal with the second one. We do have a new writer attached. Things go way different, basically retcon the first film or definitely do some things to discredit the first film. Pooh looks entirely different, they have different masks, there's no continuity to any of it. But there are some objective criticisms we can throw at this thing. Number one, it looks like shit. It looks better than the first one for sure, but again, the bar is so low, it's under the Earth's crust. While it does look better, it's still akin to something you would have saw in a 60s porno shoot. Everything has this layer of like petroleum jelly over it, Later in the film, there's a lot of pulsing and strobing lighting effects that give you a freaking headache. I was having a hard time watching this movie at places. I also noticed a lot of scenes where there's really just a two camera setup. You got camera A, camera B, and it's just a back and forth discussion. There's really no variety. There's no interesting shots taking place in this movie. It is about as stock as you can get. It's workhorse shit. They're trying to get in and get out and get these movies. Because they have, as I've announced in a previous video, a Pooniverse coming out. A Winnie the Pooh universe that's going to be akin to the Avengers if the Avengers had a budget of $25 and an expired gift card to Red Robin. That's what they're looking at here. And these movies are all coming out this year. Culminating into this Monsters United event that's going to be in 2025. So this year alone, this team is churning out like four other movies. And again, there wasn't even a year between the Winnie the Pooh franchise films. So yeah, the, it, it's just really get it in, get it out the door. Now that's not saying there isn't some passion on display. It's just the same amount of passion I had when I made some low budget indie crap in college and high school. Like, you're not putting in the real work. Let me paint you a picture with an analogy because I like doing them. I've bought several new construction homes. And then I usually turn around and flip them after two or three years, make a decent profit, go in a new one, wash, rinse, repeat. It's worked out well for the family. We get a nice, lovely home. I've gone with the same builder for the last four new houses. In this last one, we moved from Minnesota to South Carolina. And I don't know if it's a restrictions thing. I don't know if just the standards are a lot lower in the South or it's a post-COVID situation or maybe all of the above. But holy shit, this house build is atrocious. It's the same company by name, but it's certainly not the same quality build. The bones are bad. We've replaced the floor. Stuff is chipping away off the walls. There's nail pops everywhere. Some are be, of, of course, some are expected, but this is ridiculous what we've dealt with. The way that the house is designed is just miserable. It's poorly lit. It's poorly laid out. And that's what I'm talking about when I say Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey does exist. It is a movie. It's going to theaters and charging you the same amount of money as another movie. Much like I bought this brand new house. It's like other brand new houses, but it's not the same quality, folks. 
And some people still like it, and that's okay. My neighbor's two houses down. They love their home. They're very happy with it. But I know what I had before I moved in here. I know what they're capable of doing, and I know that I paid just as much for this shit as I paid for the last one, and it was five times better. So, seeing people giving praise to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 because it's better than the predecessor, that doesn't mean dick to me when the predecessor was ass and I felt like I wasted a bunch of money on it. This time around, I feel like I wasted a bunch of money on it again, but it was less horrible. So, talk about the pros. If you like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, again, no accounting for your taste, but you're gonna love this one. Not a single person that liked that first movie is gonna come into this one hating it. I could not imagine a scenario where that takes place. I really can't. It is better in every single aspect. The lighting is better. It's still terrible. You still can barely see anything at night. It's lit like shit, but that's still a step up from before. There is way more killing and gore. If you want killing and gore, this is the movie for you, especially in the final act. There is 20 or so minutes where Pooh and his friends are going on a rampage killing spree. Three, um, the story is there this time. There wasn't really a story in the first one. I think this story is absolute insanity. It makes no sense at all. It's pretty dumb. There are very long monologues in this film. Holy shit. One guy is just hilarious because he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you literally everything you need to know about Winnie the Pooh and what's happening with him. It's, it's so ridiculous. And the way that that scene is shot and framed up and lit is, is, is hilarious. They don't really have fire back there when he's on film, so they're just kind of like pulsating the lights. <laughs> it's just so bad. <laughs> but whatever. People like the camp. They like the corny, low-budget stuff, and that's fair. That's fine. I like some of it. I really enjoy Terrifier 1 and 2. I think that those are fun, and they, they're competently done, and they're, they're executed well, and there's some... There is some fear to those movies, though, and there's definitely a gross-out factor. With Winnie the Pooh, though, I don't get any of it. That's the problem at the end of the day that I have. Yes, there's some gore, and there is a good amount of violence, but there is no thrill to any of it. There's no tension to any of it. These aren't scary characters. So when they build up these scenes where it's this Halloween-esque shot going through a house, I I I'm feeling nothing other than, are we going to get past this? Because it's it's so pointless. No one's scared of these characters. They're dumb. They're guys with fake masks on. They look silly. And that's the big problem I had with the first one and this one. Not only are they just total cash grabs on the trademark, but they also don't have fun with the property. This one attempts to a little bit later. Way towards the end, there's a pun or two, and there's a play off the characters, but it's way too late. These movies are so serious. And the event I went to, the director slash actor and one of the other guys, a producer or something, they talked before the movie started for like 15 minutes about their expanded universe and all that stuff. And they're like really serious about this. <laughs> like way more serious than they have any right to be. I, I, I just, I don't understand why they're so, they're like all in on Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, instead of treating it like more of an Austin Powers, how it should have been, or something that's just very tongue in cheek and having fun with it. Like a Dracula dead and loving it. That's how Winnie the Pooh should have felt, like a Dracula dead and loving it. Something that's got serious elements, but it's very fun and playful and obviously having a good time with the property. This is just dire stuff. It's very monotone a lot of the times. Uh, some of the acting choices are pretty funny as well. Christopher Robin, played by the director, fine. He does an all right job. He does an okay job. His parents, though, his dad looks to be in his late 40s, early 50s. His mom's like 90. I don't really get that relationship. I thought that that was the dad's mom at first until he said my parents. And I thought, oh, okay. Okay, well, I guess she married young. I guess she was a cougar out on the town looking for a hot meal and she found one. I didn't really notice the music getting an upgrade. It was very generic throughout. Until the end, there is this hilariously out of place emo song that comes on by some punk pop band I've never heard of, but it was so out of nowhere. It didn't fit at all with the tone of the film. Very, I mean, I guess it kind of does because the movie's all over the place with the tone. You can just tell these are rushed products when they don't even take the time to give us a fucking establishing shot. There were several scenes in the film where I didn't know what I was looking at. 
uh, a girl babysitting a kid in a house, maybe, or a farmhouse. I don't know. It poos like in a barn at one point. We don't get a single shot of this house. Like, what does it look like? Where are these people? Are they in the country? Are they in the city? Are they on the outskirts of town? What is going on? Lots of weird editing in this film where a character will just kind of show up and fall down and it will fade to black. Or we'll have Owl, who's the new character, chasing one of the protagonists. And then that chasing just ends. She just gets away, I guess. He got bored and left. Uh, the character designs in this. Obviously, Tigger was the big draw from the trailer. Owl is in this a lot. Tigger's barely in it. He's fine. I do think it's funny how he calls people bitch like four times. Like, where you going, bitch? Doesn't sound anything like Tigger. They're not really playing off any of the, the catchphrases. There might be one. But Owl's even worse. Owl, for some reason, <laughs> he's got a beak nose, but a regular mouth instead of making the beak his mouth. Because again, the, the budget, even though it's probably a million this time around, it's just not enough. Now with the churn and burn time they have, they got to get Pinocchio unstrung in production. They got to get Bambi going. They got to get Peter Pan flying. Like these are real things they're working on as part of the shared expanded universe. So yes, it's got more that people probably wanted from the first, but it is a far cry from a good movie. And it's not something that I would recommend people watch. But again, if you're interested for some reason, if you have a sick fascination with this whole thing, you, you'll probably find something that you can enjoy. But for the majority of people, for the mainstream audiences, this is going to be absolute trash. For the cult following that's into this, you're going to enjoy it. And I guess there's nothing else to say. Does that make it good? No. That just means it's something that you can enjoy. Again, back to the home build. My neighbors paid a lot of money for their home. It's had a myriad of issues, unacceptable issues, riddled with problems. They can still love the place, but that doesn't make it a good build. All right, let me know your thoughts. Please comment below. Again, I would appreciate if you reached on over to that subscribe honeypot, push that button, and it would be a nice sticky treat for me. Again, I hear how it sounds. Thank you for watching, and hopefully, I'll catch you next time.